The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The God who is the creator of heaven and earth. The God of all glory. The God of all righteousness. The God of all eternity. The God of all purity. The God of all righteousness and holiness. The God of all the heavens. Look at the heavens. Look at the heavens and how far they reach worlds and galaxies as far as the eye can see. The further you look into the heavens, the more you can find. I struggle to understand those who don't believe there is a God. The reason being is, I don't understand how someone can believe we are here by chance. But those who don't believe there is a God, literally one second after they pass into eternity, they are going to believe there is a God. Just one moment after leaving this world, they are going to know without a shadow of a doubt that there is a God. They are going to see him in all his glory, in all his majesty, in all of his holiness. And they will believe. But at this point, salvation will no longer be an option. The glory of God is something that words cannot explain. The glory of God is something that is beyond our human minds. The human body cannot withstand the sight of God. No man has seen God and lived. People have seen angels and lived, but no man, not a single man, has seen that eternal being that is from everlasting to everlasting and lived. If you ever truly understood the depths of the glory of God, your life would change. If you ever just saw a mere glimpse of the glory of God, your whole life would change. If you ever just saw a mere glimpse of the glory of God, you would humble yourself to him and you would fall at his feet and worship him and adore him because you would know that only he deserves to be worshipped and adored. John saw an angel in the book of Revelation and his first instinct was to worship that angel and that was just an angel. How much more God, how much more of a God that no man has seen and lived. If you ever saw just a mere glimpse of glory of God, a fire would ignite in you because he is a benevolent God. He is a kind God. He is a loving God. He is a God of affection. He is a God that can be approached. He is not like these other strange God that you cannot come to know and approach. The God of this Bible encourages you to approach him. The God of this Bible is a God who you can become his friend and and he will become your friend. He is described as a friend that sticks closer than a brother. In other words, come hell or high water, he will be there. Isaiah 43 verse 2, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. I will be with thee. I will be with thee. I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And he is the giver of all good gifts, the Bible says in James 1 verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. The glory of God, he is perfect in all that he does. God is a good God. He is what you are longing for, not drugs, not illicit sex, not stuff, not cars, not bags, not women, not men, not money. What you are longing for is God. It is God that you need. It is God that gives you life. 
It is God that gives you joy. It is God that will feed your soul. You do not need religion. You do not need a mentor. You do not need a therapist. You don't need another relationship. What you need is God Almighty, the one who created you and knew you before the foundation of the world. Chronicles 5, verse 13 and 14. It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Although God is omnipresent, he does not manifest his power and glory everywhere. The glory of God is the fullness of his majesty which can be displayed through any of his attributes. For instance, God's glory can manifest when his people worship him. Another instance is when God displays his glory in battle while taking vengeance on behalf of his children. In so many ways as such, God could manifest his glory. One thing is common every time God's glory is manifested. The supernatural is always produced. When God displays his glory, everything else is displaced. God does not share his glory with any idol or any human or spirit whatsoever. The glory of God is awesome. There is something unusual about God, something very strange and unusual about the glory of God, that no man can see him and live. After the dedication of the Temple of Solomon in 2 Chronicles 5, the Ark of Covenant was brought into the temple and the trumpeters and singers began to worship God. The worship was so intense that the glory of God came down visibly in the form of a cloud and filled the temple such that the priests could not stand to minister. The glory of God is experienced whenever his manifest presence comes into a place or upon an individual. For instance, Moses fellowshiped with God for 40 days on Mount Sinai, and the glory of God rubbed upon his face such that the Israelites could not look into his eyes. There is something unusual about God, something very strange and unusual about the glory of God, that no man can see him and live. There is no idol that can rival with God in glory. The glory of God is accompanied by his jealousy. He judges anything that attempts to stand in his way or share in his glory. In 1 Samuel 4, the Philistines defeated the Israelites because of their sins, and they captured the Ark of Covenant, a symbolism of the presence and glory of God in the land of Israel. We know from Scripture that the ark represents the glory of God, because when Phinehas's wife heard that the ark had been captured, she travailed and gave birth prematurely, and she called the child Ichabod, meaning that the glory of God has departed from Israel. But the Philistines made the mistake of their lives by putting the ark of covenant into the shrine of their god Dagon. 1 Samuel 5 verse 2 to 4 says, When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when they arose early on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord, and the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold 
Only the stump of Dagon was left to him. God does not share his glory with anything. He is the only great and powerful God. He alone deserves to be worshipped and adored. Take time to worship God. Our God is the King of glory. Psalm 24 verse 7 and 8 says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. God is glorious in battle. He is glorious in praises. He is glorious in holiness. Everything about God is glorious. His manifest presence advertises His glory. Wherever God's presence is manifested, His glory is manifested too. The glory and the presence of God are complementary. God's glory will never be manifested where His manifest presence is not present. All chains are broken under the atmosphere of His presence. All battles are won in the atmosphere of His glory. When the glory of God comes down, your shame is over. When His glory manifests, your chains are broken. Prophet Isaiah referred to the glory of God in Isaiah 64 verse 1 when he prayed, O oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. The God we serve is the God of glory. He dwells in splendor, and his kingdom is glorious. Fortunately, we are the children of the glorious God. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish.